creating the automation and then how much time does it consume to maintain it. What are the other ways to, to make the testing, testing results, the state of the software, the, the quality visible? Mm -hmm. Really grateful for the insight that you gave about like, you know, lo looking not only at the product, but looking at time itself mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. how how well have we done the testing because that was sort of yeah, valuable yeah, insight. Yeah. Like. It's Test Guru TV time again, and the question of the day is What can I do to measure testing? And the dude sitting right next to me, his name is Jani Tuna Haikala, an ultimate champion of testing. And here next to me is Antti Nittuvita, a tireless testing advocate, a trainer, a public speaker, and an author. And this is a weekly show about mental health in software industry because everybody's just happier when software works. Welcome to the show. We are nailing it. Yes, we are. Boom! I already forgot what the question was. <laughs> what can I do to measure testing? Yeah. So what can I do to measure testing? Um, yeah, this brings... Maybe it may bring questions about the question. Well, yeah, it does. There's, there's, <laughs> quite, a few there's, there's quite a few ways to go here. So, Yeah. Um, and, and in the, la in the previous episode, we talked about deconstructing. So uh, I think uh, yeah, it's a little bit of time yeah. to deconstruct the question uh, first, because I would say like, how do you measure testing? Um, first of all, deconstruct testing. So what is testing about and what kind of testing? Because we can actually talk about like uh, activities, focusing for quality in the mm -hmm. development mm -hmm. that may be considered testing. Um, it may be unit testing while we develop the software. Um, it may be some kind of integration testing, maybe even like usability testing, whatever it is. So there are different ways to do different things in testing. So mm -hmm. that applies to measuring that as well. Yeah, yeah, would be actually, yeah. would be awesome to have like some kind of a context for the question. Absolutely, yeah, because yeah. Um, you just re rephrased it a little. You said, yeah. how do I measure testing? Ah, what the uh, question what, was. Yeah, uh, what can I do to measure testing? What can I do to measure testing? So Ooh. those could <laughs> be the same or maybe they're not. Yeah. So, so what I'm sort of trying to figure out is, yeah. is what actually the person asking is is sort of looking for yeah are they alre already measuring or what is it what can i measure how can i measure yeah and what can i do to measure testing implies that that you would actually like to learn what are the possible activities to make testing more measurable perhaps yeah that's interesting um one of the like uh, this is like kind of a mental model as well. I, mm -hmm. I like to collect yeah. mental models. Yeah. Um, it, it has to do with, with like like this. I was looking at, an, at some kind of a dinosaur documentary on um, National Geographic uh, because like, you know my son like, likes dinosaurs and mm -hmm. Jurassic Park. So um, so when they were unearthing the, the foss, is it the fossil? Something like that. Yeah. So, no, I, I, I'll, been, I'll, yeah, I'll I don't it. know English that well. So, um, anyways, they, they were like buried under layers and layers that they called like sediments. Yeah, yeah layers yeah, of yeah. like earth right. and, and yeah. dirt and, and rock and stuff like that. So, that was really interesting and really like gave me this insight about testing too. Because like, when you are doing software testing, um, you have the the product that you are you need to test, mm -hmm. and that's like the layer number one. And that's that's the fossil. That's the real thing. Yeah. And and when you start to use the software and you start to test it somehow, um, you immediately because human brain works that way, starts to build like a mental model of it. So ah, oh, this is how it works. Mm -hmm. And that's the first. The mental model is the first abstraction layer that you yeah. put upon the real thing. So it's mm -hmm. the first sediment. And yeah. then the second sediment would be that yeah, I want to draw a flow chart about this like feature or whatever it is i want to like like map this in a mind map for example and then you have like the second sediment then you have second layer of ab abstraction on the real thing um then you may decide to script test cases or you know test automation whatever it is right. you decide yeah. to do tests somehow and then it will create the third layer of abstraction and and that way you build on on layer on layer of abstraction on the real thing mm -hmm. 
And, and then when we start to think about measuring software testing, we pick an abstraction layer, for example, the automated test scripts and, and try to measure something like pass rates. So you actually measure the abstraction <laughs> layers mm -hmm. yeah. and, and not the real thing. And that's the, I would say that's the problem of, of like really building like metrics without understanding these abstraction layers and the sediments. And I would say like the first thing is to like really clarify what your abstraction layers are. Mm -hmm. And for each layer, ask the question, what could I do to measure on this abstraction layer? Yeah. And True. what would be meaningful to measure for the people I'm serving? So, mm -hmm. so you could measure everything, but they might not be meaningful things that you measure. So you need to ask yourself mm -hmm. and the people mm -hmm. you serve, yeah, what yeah, would be yeah. meaningful things to measure on this abstraction level? Exactly. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's sort of something that I've also been thinking about here, here when, when sort of uh, preparing for <laughs> answering the que question. Uh, First thing that you mentioned was the or one one thing actually not the first but one one thing that you mentioned was the test automation test mm -hmm. automation cases. So in for example in in the case of t test automation you could measure could I say usual things mm -hmm. the amount of test cases run rates pass rates mm -hmm. things like that. Um, but then also for example for for test automation you could sort of measure the uh, automation itself, mm -hmm. not the results of the testing, but the automation itself, the usability, maintainability, uh, stability, yeah, and things, how things, things, things like that. Yeah. Uh, you to, to get information about the automation, yeah, not, uh, not how the results it, of the automation, yeah. but the automating oh, process it, yeah, itself. It itself, yeah, yeah. So you definitely need to think what you actually need, yeah, what, what do you want? And so the meaningful. second thing that you yeah. mentioned, or another thing that you mentioned, was. Um, sort of the actionability of, of those results. Yeah. To measure true. everything or what, what is it meaningful to you? So yeah. what do you want out of that measurement? And um, I, it, it, this, in my mind, doesn't apply only, only to testing, but to anything really. If you're measuring something, you sort of need to have an idea also. Why am I measuring this? Yeah. And it, are there like some limits mm -hmm. for the value, for example, at that where, where you can sort of make some conclusions if it's good enough mm -hmm. if it's working well or if there's a limit for you know okay now this is not looking good we need to take some action mm -hmm. and what that action might be so you yeah. sort of need to be I, I think there's no point in measuring something where there is no action for the yeah. measurement yeah. available so those are sort of the things to, to consider. Yeah, I think. like yeah. to consider the outcome. What mm -hmm. do you want to achieve yeah. by yeah. measuring? Yeah. Then the purpose of it. Mm -hmm. So what would we make measuring this meaningful? And then only then start to think about how should I like build these metrics right. and what to measure and how to measure it. So, exactly. so yeah. yeah, so like like result purpose and, and the mm -hmm. action plan. Mm -hmm. um, that That's the perfect way to, to put it, I, I would say. And the really important thing to me was was it actually was something that I learned while mm -hmm. you were speaking uh, was that that for for example on the automation really valuable and meaningful information is how much time has the organization put in you know development mm -hmm. time in creating the automation and then how much time does it consume to maintain it yeah. so so that 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 will allow you to understand the price of it mm -hmm. and, and the stability exactly. of it is yeah, quite that's in true. interesting yeah Hey, a quick break. If you are someone who wants to achieve the next level as a testing professional, really grow your professional value for your team, your bosses, your clients, I invite you to the Test Guru Insiders. That way you can get the new episodes of Test Guru TV from my inbox to yours a minimum of a week earlier than everybody else in the world sees it. And in addition to that, you get to join us every month in our live studio sessions and live stream seminars for free. So you gotta come. Prove that guru slash insiders. Join Test Guru Insiders now. Yeah. And and go, going back to like these layers mm -hmm. upon layers yeah. idea, um, one of the things that 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 usually I, I know this project's forgetting, but I found it out to be really important and valuable metric is like going really close uh, on on the lowest sediments mm -hmm. and 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 to the point where you have the real thing and only you doing the testing, you know, yeah. manually 
doing exploring and using really using the stuff mm-hmm. um and that's the like that's the raw kind of a situation where you are at yeah and in that place you could for example ask yourself i i, I use like in in my other life not mm-hmm. in testing i use an app called dailyo yeah to measure my moods <laughs> so <laughs> so every morning when i wake up um i i do a little bit of yoga practice and, and sometimes meditate and then i open dailyo app and it asks me how are you feeling now yeah. and I, i have this like scale of one to five like five is like epic level and and one is like like super bad like having the covid and and hangover at mm-hmm. the same time mm-hmm. and 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 then uh, then I give it the score, and then yeah. then midday after lunch I take out the daily app again and give give a score to my mood. How am I feeling at the mm-hmm. moment? And and that way when I score my moods, um, it allows me then to answer the question. Okay, do you want do you want do I want to elaborate? Why am I feeling this way? Um, what makes me feel this way? And what could I do to improve my moods and stuff like that? Right. In a sense, the same principle may apply to testing so when mm-hmm. you are raw in the you know working with the st- actual stuff just you and the product mm-hmm. you could ask yourself for example on the morning session of testing what's my mood how was i feeling about the product and how was i feeling about te- my testing mm-hmm. give it a score and then elaborate a little yeah why i gave it the four today This is the reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when you have done this for qu- some time, you know, for each testing session, you give your scores of how was the quality and how was the testing. Um, you have a trend, you know. Mm-hmm. You see where things are going. Right. You can actually show it to someone else. That's a great metric. And you can actually combine trends if you have colleagues doing the same thing True. as well. And combined with the trend, You have the story behind it. Mm-hmm. So the reason why we were feeling this way on Thursday before our launch was this. Yeah, and, and, and it, then you can also sort of react exactly. to it. It uh, becomes because, applicable. Yeah, because when talking about what to measure, yeah. what to measure, yeah. you you know you need to sort of not measure everything. Decide mm-hmm. what you want to measure, and then sort of experiment, and then you can also change. That's true. Yeah. And that that sort of metric, uh, the feeling yeah. metric, that that helps with that also. It, so, yeah. Exactly. How true, useful yeah. useful yeah. this is. Maybe we want to adjust it a little. So, yeah, yeah. And and this this brings me up to to the last point that I had on my mind about mm-hmm. this was was that that every metrics, every metric taken out from its context, yeah, is it's hard to give a meaning to it. Mm-hmm. So, if you have numbers as a metric, um then it usually needs to come the number has to come with a story mm-hmm. it, the number has to come with the elaboration of it what does this number like mean and what were the contributors otherwise it it easily becomes like really like this um destructive way of measuring mm-hmm. things and you know i've told the story of how i got fired from my first yeah. test manager yeah. and stuff like that and those were great examples how we messed up testing just by looking at the numbers without the story behind mm-hmm. them so always the numbers and the story it yeah. is, is yeah. Kind of like yeah. in a pair yeah. and there's how do you think are there other ways what what are the other ways actually I'm not asking are there other ways what are the other ways to to make The testing, testing results, the state of the software, the, the quality visible, mm-hmm. other than than actual yeah. hard numbers. That's actually a great, like, like really deep question mm-hmm. because, like, mostly when I start to d- discuss um, uh, measuring testing, it boils down to this feeling of not understanding what's happening in testing, mm-hmm. and I need to feel in control as a manager. I need to yeah. feel in control as yeah. a product owner or CTO. And and if I don't see numbers, I don't feel like I'm in control. Mm-hmm. So are there other ways to boost that feeling of being controlled and this got sense of certainty that the testing team is doing their work? Right, exactly. So yeah. so yeah, for sure there are. For example, like like if you just are raw in testing just you and the product, you mm-hmm. could actually like for example you create a mind map out of what you are seeing and what you're yeah. experiencing yeah. and and show that yeah, this is something that we produced this week. We were doing exploratory testing buck hunting mm-hmm. and this is what we saw and in these areas we spent some time and show it show that to your CTO yeah, yeah. I will for sure it will bring the sense of certainty mm-hmm. yeah the testing team knows what they're doing they are on top of their game right so so yeah, yeah. so yeah. it's it's always or it's mostly I would say 
the the need for metrics is actually the need to feel the emotion of being in control mm-hmm. and the certainty. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. so in that sense, I would I would investigate ways to produce that sense and that feeling to others. True. Yeah. 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 I agree with you. Yeah. And for example, from the mind map, that's a great tool to mm-hmm. use. But also from the mind map, it's also possible to create, for example, a dashboard, yeah, sort of a, a table of the main main areas, main features, and sort of what. How much effort have we put into yeah. each of these areas? What is the state of the area yeah. at the moment? Is it agreeable, or are there some major or blocking box in there? Uh, sort of something you can sort of just take one glance glance at, and you can see the true. sort of sort of the situation where we're yeah, going at the true. moment. Yeah, and I've noticed that like in measuring. Uh, a lot of the time people forget to measure time mm-hmm. and and i'm not saying that hours is the like the way to go but but for example in testing like time boxing so mm-hmm. how many boxes of time have yeah, we yeah, used yeah, like yeah. for testing login uh, settings and stuff like that mm-hmm. and that could be shown on the dashboard so yeah yeah, yeah. It would True. be awesome yeah yeah um i feel like we have answered the question we have At least covered, covered a few areas. Her, yeah, covered a few areas, and <laughs> hopefully given you some points of view and perspective on the question. Um, Hope so. Yeah. Yeah, um, I'm really satisfied and and really grateful for the insight that you gave about like you know lo- looking not only at the product but looking at time itself mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. how how well have we done the testing because that was really yeah, valuable yeah, insight yeah. like what's the quality of the product what's the quality of the testing itself mm-hmm. and then yeah how expensive it is to do the automation <laughs> that's, that's Na- great nice question. to have a <laughs> yeah. good idea every now and then that's true <laughs> um, hey friends if you feel like you want to bring up your ideas or answers don't hesitate to use the comment field and of course ask questions about this question ask new questions or anything else in about testing or anything else in life um Uh, so please don't hesitate to use the comments and send your insights to us. And of course, hammer the like, the hearts and the like buttons and share the video with someone who may benefit from this video. Because like that way, uh, we can expand the mission of great software testing and everybody's so much more happier when software works. Yeah, and that's what we want. We want better software, better mental health, yeah. visibility for testing. Thank you. Bye. See you next week. Bye. Bye.